The pines in the Katoon forest were mute witnesses to a mass murder. 70 years ago, more than 4,000 Polish officers, policemen and intellectuals were executed here. Nearly all were killed with a single shot to the back of the head. One of them was a lawyer, Bolesław Skapski. After Hitler attacked Poland, he and his family fled east. There they were arrested by the Soviet secret police, the NKVD. His son was only two years old at the time. My father was arrested right before our eyes. My parents managed to speak briefly to one another for one last time. My father gave us his signet ring, I still wear it today, and his wedding ring. In a letter written from a Soviet prison, Skamsky's father writes, My dearest, I am in good health. That was the last they heard from him. News of the mass grave at Katun only became public after it was discovered by German soldiers in 1943. The bodies were buried in layers. Bolesław Skapski was among the first to be identified. But Joseph Stalin's regime denied any responsibility for the massacre. Moscow blamed the Germans and stuck stubbornly to their version of the story for 50 years. During that time, Andrzej Skapski was forced to remain silent. In communist Poland, any mention of Katun was taboo, and the victims' families painted as enemies of the regime. I don't want to speak of hatred, but everything that was done to me, how I was treated, that all strengthened my opposition to communism, to the Soviet occupation, and to the system. The first Soviet leader to admit Moscow's responsibility for the massacre was Mikhail Gorbachev. Russia promised a full investigation and turned over the AKVD files to the Poles. A memorial was built at the site in Katun, with the victims' names listed on the monument. Among them is Skapsky's father. But his son and relatives of the other victims say that's not enough. They want the crime to be classified as genocide and all the victims officially rehabilitated. But this woman says the Katun massacre was not genocide. Historian Galina Lebedeva was one of the first in Russia to investigate the mass murder. She condemns the killings, but believes that Russia has contributed all it could to shedding light on it. Without Kremlin support, we wouldn't have had access to the National Archives and would not have been able, as historians, to set the story straight, to investigate the issue and to publish. A lot became public, but a few documents are still classified. The Russian legal authorities have refused to reopen the investigation into the case, and some Russian politicians still doubt that Moscow was behind the murders. But many think Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin is right to invite his Polish counterpart to take part in a joint memorial at Katun. Even politicians such as the outspoken Sergei Markov have adopted a more conciliatory tone. I expect the relationship between Russia and Poland to slowly improve. We're working to make that happen. In that way, we want to support modern European politicians like Prime Minister Donald Tusk, who's come out against anti-Russian tendencies in Poland. Back home in Krakow, Andrzej Skapski is preparing for the trip to Katun. He thinks the memorial is an important symbol of reconciliation between Russians and Poles and expects it to lead to the declassification of the final batch of secret files and to an apology at last. We all hope that Russia will finally say it's sorry, but this apology can't be forced. It can't be an empty political gesture. It has to come from the heart. Katun is still a sensitive wound that symbolizes the repression Poland suffered under the Soviet Union. But Andrzej Skapski says that over the years he's learned patience and never to lose hope.